part one chapter four sections one and two of the possessed by fyodor dostoevsky translated by constance garnett this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine chapter four the cripple section one shatov was not perverse but acted on my note and called at midday on lizaveta nikolaevna we went in almost together i was also going to make my first call they were all that is liza her mother and mavriki nikolaevitch sitting in the big drawing-room arguing the mother was asking liza to play some waltz on the piano and as soon as liza began to play the piece asked for declared it was not the right one mavriki nikolaevitch in the simplicity of his heart took liza's part maintaining that it was the right waltz the elder lady was so angry that she began to cry she was ill and walked with difficulty her legs were swollen and for the last few days she had been continually fractious quarrelling with every one though she always stood rather in awe of liza they were pleased to see us liza flushed with pleasure and saying merci to me on shatov's account of course went to meet him looking at him with interest shatov stopped awkwardly in the doorway thanking him for coming she led him up to her mother this is mr shatov of whom i have told you and this is mr g a great friend of mine and of stepan trofimovitch's mavriki nikolaevitch made his acquaintance yesterday too and which is the professor there's no professor at all maman but there is you said yourself that there'd be a professor it's this one probably she disdainfully indicated shatov i didn't tell you that there'd be a professor mr g is in the service and mr shatov is a former student a student or professor they all come from the university just the same you only want to argue but the swiss one had moustaches and a beard it's the son of stepan trofimovitch that maman always calls the professor said liza and she took shatov away to the sofa at the other end of the drawing-room when her legs swell she's always like this you understand she's ill she whispered to shatov still with the same marked curiosity scrutinizing him especially his shock of hair are you an officer the old lady inquired of me liza had mercilessly abandoned me to her no i am in the service mr g is a great friend of stepan trofimovitch's liza chimed in immediately are you in stepan trofimovitch's service yes and he's a professor too isn't he ah maman you must dream at night of professors cried liza with annoyance i see too many when i'm awake but you always will contradict your mother were you here four years ago when nikolai vsevolodovitch was in the neighbourhood i answered that i was and there was some englishman with you no there was not liza laughed well you see there was no englishman so it must have been idle gossip and varvara petrovna and stepan trofimovitch both tell lies and they all tell lies auntie and stepan trofimovitch yesterday thought there was a resemblance between nikolai vsevolodovitch and prince harry in shakespeare's henry the fourth and in answer to that maman says that there was no englishman here liza explained to us if harry wasn't here there was no englishman it was no one else but nikolai vsevolodovitch at his tricks i assure you that maman's doing it on purpose liza thought necessary to explain to shatov she's really heard of shakespeare i read her the first act of othello myself but she's in great pain now maman listen it's striking twelve it's time you took your medicine the doctor's come a maid-servant announced at the door the old lady got up and began calling her dog zemirka zemirka you come with me at least zemirka a horrid little old dog instead of obeying crept under the sofa where liza was sitting don't you want to then i don't want you good-bye my good sir i don't know your name or your father she said addressing me anton lavrentyevitch well it doesn't matter with me it goes in at one ear and out of the other don't you come with me mavriki nikolaevitch it was zemirka i called thank god i can still walk without help and to-morrow i shall go for a drive she walked angrily out of the drawing-room anton lavrentyevitch will you talk meanwhile to mavriki nikolaevitch i assure you you'll both be gainers by getting to know one another better said liza 
and she gave a friendly smile to mavriky nikolaevitch who beamed all over as she looked at him there was no help for it i remained to talk to mavriky nikolaevitch section two lizaveta nikolaevna's business with shatov turned out to my surprise to be really only concerned with literature i had imagined i don't know why that she had asked him to come with some other object we mavriky nikolaevitch and i that is seeing that they were talking aloud and not trying to hide anything from us began to listen and at last they asked our advice it turned out that lizaveta nikolaevna was thinking of bringing out a book which she thought would be of use but being quite inexperienced she needed someone to help her the earnestness with which she began to explain her plan to shatov quite surprised me she must be one of the new people i thought she has not been to switzerland for nothing shatov listened with attention his eyes fixed on the ground showing not the slightest surprise that a giddy young lady in society should take up work that seemed so out of keeping with her her literary scheme was as follows numbers of papers and journals are published in the capitals and the provinces of russia and every day a number of events are reported in them the year passes the newspapers are everywhere folded up and put away in cupboards or are torn up and become litter or are used for making parcels and wrapping things numbers of these facts make an impression and are remembered by the public but in the course of years they are forgotten many people would like to look them up but it is a labour for them to embark upon this sea of paper often knowing nothing of the day or place or even year in which the incident occurred yet if all the facts for a whole year were brought together into one book on a definite plan and with a definite object under headings with references arranged according to months and days such a compilation might reflect the characteristics of russian life for the whole year even though the facts published are only a small fraction of the events that take place instead of a number of newspapers there would be a few fat books that's all observed shatov but lizaveta nikolaevna clung to her idea in spite of the difficulty of carrying it out and her inability to describe it it ought to be one book and not even a very thick one she maintained but even if it were thick it would be clear for the great point would be the plan and the character of the presentation of facts of course not all would be collected and reprinted the decrees and acts of government local regulations laws all such facts however important might be altogether omitted from the proposed publication they could leave out a great deal and confine themselves to a selection of events more or less characteristic of the moral life of the people of the personal character of the russian people at the present moment of course everything might be put in strange incidents fires public subscriptions everything good or bad every speech or word perhaps even floodings of the rivers perhaps even some government decrees but only such things to be selected as are characteristic of the period everything would be put in with a certain view a special significance and intention with an idea which would illuminate the facts looked at in the aggregate as a whole and finally the book ought to be interesting even for light reading apart from its value as a work of reference it would be so to say a presentation of the spiritual moral inner life of russia for a whole year we want every one to buy it we want it to be a book that will be found on every table liza declared i understand that all lies in the plan and that's why i apply to you she concluded she grew very warm over it and although her explanation was obscure and incomplete shatov began to understand so it would amount to something with a political tendency a selection of facts with a special tendency he muttered still not raising his head not at all we must not select with a particular bias and we ought not to have any political tendency in it nothing but impartiality that will be the only tendency but a tendency would be no harm said shatov with a slight movement and one can hardly avoid it if there is any selection at all the very selection of facts will suggest how they are to be understood your idea is not a bad one then such a book is possible cried liza delightedly we must look into it and consider it's an immense undertaking one can't work it out on the spur of the moment we need experience and when we do publish the book i doubt whether we shall find out how to do it 
possibly after many trials but the thought is alluring it's a useful idea he raised his eyes at last and they were positively sparkling with pleasure he was so interested was it your own idea he asked liza in a friendly and as it were bashful way the idea is no trouble you know it's the plan is the trouble liza smiled i understand very little i am not very clever and i only pursue what is clear to me myself pursue perhaps that's not the right word liza inquired quickly the word is all right i meant nothing i thought while i was abroad that even i might be of some use i have money of my own lying idle why shouldn't i even i work for the common cause besides the idea somehow occurred to me all at once of itself i didn't invent it at all and was delighted with it but i saw at once that i couldn't get on without someone to help because i am not competent to do anything of myself my helper of course would be the co-editor of the book we would go halves you would give the plan and the work mine would be the original idea and the means for publishing it would the book pay its expenses do you think if we hit on a good plan the book will go i warn you that i am not doing it for profit but i am very anxious that the book should circulate and should be very proud of making a profit well but how do i come in why i invite you to be my fellow worker to go halves you will think out the plan how do you know that i am capable of thinking out the plan people have talked about you to me and here i've heard uh, i know that you are very clever and are working for the cause and 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 th think a great deal pyotr stepanovitch verkovensky spoke about you in switzerland she added hurriedly he's a very clever man isn't he shatov stole a fleeting momentary glance at her but dropped his eyes again nikolai vsyevolodovitch told me a great deal about you too shatov suddenly turned red but here are the newspapers liza hurriedly picked up from a chair a bundle of newspapers that lay tied up ready i've tried to mark the facts here for selection to sort them and i have put the papers together you will see shatov took the bundle take them home and look at them where do you live in bogoyavlensky street filipov's house i know i think it's there too i've been told a captain lives beside you mr lebyadkin said liza in the same hurried manner shatov sat for a full minute with the bundle in his outstretched hand making no answer and staring at the floor you'd better find someone else for these jobs i shouldn't suit you at all he brought out at last dropping his voice in an awfully strange way almost to a whisper liza flushed crimson what jobs are you speaking of mavriki nikolaevitch she cried please bring that letter here i too followed mavriki nikolaevitch to the table look at this she turned suddenly to me unfolding the letter in great excitement have you ever seen anything like it please read it aloud i want mr shatov to hear it too with no little astonishment i read aloud the following missive to the perfection miss tushin gracious lady lizaveta nikolaevna oh she's a sweet queen lizaveta tushin when on side saddle she gallops by and in the breeze her fair tresses fly or when with her mother in church she bows low and on devout faces a red flush doth flow then for the joys of lawful wedlock i aspire and follow her and her mother with tears of desire composed by an unlearned man in the midst of a discussion gracious lady i pity myself above all men that i did not lose my arm at sevastopol not having been there at all but served all the campaign delivering paltry provisions which i look on as a degradation you are a goddess of antiquity and i am nothing but have had a glimpse of infinity look on it as a poem and no more for after all poetry is nonsense and justifies what would be considered impudence in prose can the sun be angry with the infusoria if the latter composes verses to her from the drop of water where there is a multitude of them if you look through the microscope even the club for promoting humanity to the larger animals in tip-top society in petersburg which rightly feels compassion for dogs and horses despises the brief infusoria making no reference to it whatever because it is not big enough i'm not big enough either 
the idea of marriage might seem droll but soon i shall have property worth two hundred souls through a misanthropist whom you ought to despise i can tell a lot and i can undertake to produce documents that would mean siberia don't despise my proposal a letter from an infusoria is of course in verse captain lebyadkin your most humble friend and he has time no end that was written by a man in a drunken condition a worthless fellow i cried indignantly i know him that letter i received yesterday liza began to explain flushing and speaking hurriedly i saw myself at once that it came from some foolish creature and i haven't yet shown it to maman for fear of upsetting her more but if he is going to keep on like that i don't know how to act mavriky nikolaevitch wants to go out and forbid him to do it as i have looked upon you as a colleague she turned to shatov and as you live there i wanted to question you so as to judge what more is to be expected of him he's a drunkard and a worthless fellow shatov muttered with apparent reluctance is he always so stupid no he's not stupid at all when he's not drunk i used to know a general who wrote verses exactly like that i observed laughing one can see from the letter that he is clever enough for his own purposes mavriky nikolaevitch who had till then been silent put in unexpectedly he lives with some sister liza queried yes with his sister they say he tyrannizes over her is that true shatov looked at liza again scowled and muttering what business is it of mine moved towards the door ah stay cried liza in a flutter where are you going we have so much still to talk over what is there to talk over i'll let you know to-morrow why the most important thing of all the printing press do believe me that i am not in jest that i really want to work in good earnest liza assured him in growing agitation if we decide to publish it where is it to be printed you know it's a most important question for we shan't go to moscow for it and the printing press here is out of the question for such a publication i made up my mind long ago to set up a printing press of my own in your name perhaps and i know maman will allow it so long as it is in your name how do you know that i could be a printer shatov asked sullenly why pyotr stepanovitch told me of you in switzerland and referred me to you as one who knows the business and able to set up a printing press he even meant to give me a note to you from himself but i forgot it shatov's face changed as i recollect now he stood for a few seconds longer then went out of the room liza was angry does he always go out like that she asked turning to me i was just shrugging my shoulders when shatov suddenly came back went straight up to the table and put down the roll of papers he had taken i'm not going to be your helper i haven't the time why why i think you are angry liza asked him in a grieved and imploring voice the sound of her voice seemed to strike him for some moments he looked at her intently as though trying to penetrate to her very soul no matter he muttered softly i don't want to and he went away altogether liza was completely overwhelmed quite disproportionately in fact so it seemed to me wonderfully queer man mavriky nikolaevitch observed aloud end of chapter four section two recording by expatriate in bangor maine